Coming to Japan, as you see, is just like, wow. Neons everywhere, people everywhere. The kanji, the writing, the calligraphy. I couldn't read it before, but now I can read it. I decided I had to live in Japan because most of my work was coming out of Japan. It happened in stages. Shalomar started tra traveling me around the country. That led to going around the world. I'm an international boy, the original international boy, living around the world. Jeffrey's globe trotting started in 1984 when Shalimar split up. Both he and Jody walked away from the successful group to pursue solo careers, leaving Howard to carry the torch. But Shalimar was still a potential moneymaker. Well, they've been monumental successes and they sold a lot of records. So the name was valuable. So Dick did the same thing he'd done in the past. He looked for replacements. The first one he got from Leon Silvers, a flashy, funky guitarist named Mickey Free. I was discovered by Gene Simmons from Kiss, and Leon Silvers heard me playing guitar. The funny thing about it was I didn't even know who Shalma was, because I was a rock and roll, as I am now, guitar player, you know, Hendrix and all that stuff. And so I actually had to go to the store and, and buy a my record and listen to it and see who they were. And I dug it, so I said, sure. <laughs> Mickey Free was like my lifesaver, man. You know, because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been able to last through that year and a half, two years. I was a good dude. When I first joined Shalimar, yeah, me and Howard really connected. That boy kept me laughing the whole time, so he's a good, good, good person. Still missing was a female singer to replace Jody Watley. To find one, Solar Records put together a nationwide talent search. We went everywhere to every big city. Girls would come in and sing a Shalimar song, their favorite one or whatever. And there were some good girls in there, no doubt. Beautiful girls, and I could sing. Elisa Davis was somebody who I had worked with in Nashville. And when uh, Jody and Jeffrey left the group, I said, ooh, this might be an opportunity for Delisa. <laughs> we brought her in, she competed against the other girls. She wound up getting the spot. They flew me out to Hollywood. And then my mom was all like, Shalimar who? I'm like, you know, don't worry about it. I just need money to get my hair done. <laughs> the newly reformed Shalimar went straight to the studio. In spite of their staggering personnel changes, their 1984 LP Heartbreak produced a Grammy Award winning song for the movie Beverly Hills Cop and one of the biggest pop hits of their career. Dancing in the Sheets. At the time, Dancing in the Sheets just blew up. And so it was like an immediate success. So we immediately had to do a video. I got your smile. I know I've seen you here before. Howard and I were Shalimar's like uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards kind of a thing. On the road, we raged just like rock stars, man, like pop stars. We had our fun, we had our chicks, you know. Yeah, it's another story. It's another segment for Unsung. Yeah, man. Grab your coat and wave goodbye to your friends. I wanna take you where the night never ends. I feel the need to sweep you off of your feet. You and me, we should be dancing in the sheets. But Howard's heart was no longer in it. In 1984, as dancing in the sheets hovered in the top 20, Howard left Shalimar. In some sense, yeah, I was, I was buying my time. I was ready to do my solo thing at the time. He wanted a little bit more control, I think, at that time than Dick would let him have. You know, and I could tell there was some tension there between those two. That was really, really strange, man, when Howard left. You know, it kind of left kind of like a void in the band. Filling voids in Shalimar was becoming a routine by this point. To fill Howard's role, Dick looked to one of Shalimar's background singers, Sidney Justin. I played football for a couple years in the NFL and then uh, got injured, but I was always involved in music, you know, and uh, Shalimar needed the background singer to double Howard. When Howard decided to leave, it was kind of almost like a natural trans transition. But internal divisions undercut Shalimar. Yeah, yeah, there were tension yeah. with Delisa and, and Mickey. 
I mean, there was tension. There was tension between Delisa and Howard before I got involved. We were three people kind of thrown together, trying to get the job done and adjust at the same time. By the time Shalimar's ninth LP, Circumstantial Evidence, appeared in 1987, the fans were losing interest. If you do a record and you're in the studio and you have, you have tension, and it basically comes out, that vibe comes out on the record. I think it did a lot for us, too. The fans really wanted the old Shalimar, the black fans, you know, R&B fans. And I wanted to be, you know, what I always wanted to be, which was a rock and roll gu guitar player. I felt that we had a lot of potential. You know, even with Mickey as a rock and roller, you know what I mean? Three more years slipped away before the once prolific Shalimar made their 10th record, Wake Up. But few of their fans were still paying attention. We started trying to get more back into the R&B sound, but it was already too late to reestablish something. It was just the end of the road, man, and it sounded like it. And Sydney really, really tried to make that album a great album because he was at the helm. I was just over it. We were all fighting in that band. But while Shalimar was quietly slipping away, Jody Watley's career was just heating up. It wasn't just the record, it was the videos and my style and the Hasta La Vista Baby. And I think it's time that I walked away Cause I'm not the person I used to be